Hello, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to be working with wire weaving. We are going to be using the basket weave weaving um, pattern to make these spiraled wire earrings. Now I'm using copper wire for these earrings, and then I have sterling silver ear wires. And this is a lot of fun, and I, I hope you enjoy making these earrings. Here's what we're going to need. We're going to need two pieces of 20 gauge wire. Uh, we want it about 8 inches long. We need a dowel of some sort. This is just a wooden dowel, but you can use this or some pliers or whatever. But it's nicer to use a dowel or a knitting needle for this. Uh, you'll need some 28 gauge wire. That's going to be our weaving wire. You will need a pair of flat nose or chain nose pliers, a flush cutter, a pair of round nose pliers, a pair of earring findings, and one lonely little four millimeter bead. You begin by finding about the middle of your eight inch piece of wire. So what I do is I usually just kind of bend up the ends so they more or less meet. And then I kind of scooch this down a little bit. So I can see my middle is right about here. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers and somewhere towards the, the smaller tip of the round nose pliers. And I'm gently going to compress these together. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to end up getting a little loop at the top. And then I'm going to get the rest of these, the, the long ends, kind of parallel. Okay, so I've got it about like this, and I want it a little bit flatter, so I'm going to take my uh, chain nose or flat nose pliers, and I'm going to, let's see if we can get this in focus real well. I'm going to come in with them, and I'm just going to squeeze, just gently. So you can see I've got it a lot smaller now. Now if you want to, you can squeeze it just a little bit more, but I wouldn't really go beyond, oh, oh maybe two millimeters or, or so. I, I would like to keep this more like uh, two or three millimeters. So anyway, you've got a loop, and you've got your four inches down here. And don't worry if the ends aren't exactly perfect. Uh, they should be really close. I mean, you, you don't want to have one way out here and then one way in here. But uh, if you do this, you're going to get them pretty accurate. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using some turquoise enameled copper wire. It's 28 gauge. And the reason I'm using this instead of the regular copper wire is just so it shows up on screen a little bit better. Because when I tried this with the regular copper wire, you couldn't tell what I was doing. <laughs> All right, so I want to keep about a two or three inch tail, and we're going to start by pulling apart the uh, bobby pin, for lack of a better term, just a little bit, not much, because what you're going to do is you're going to just coil for just a little bit. So I'm going to have my tail end coming up, and I'm just going to start coiling around. So do try to keep it fairly neat. So let's see this coil a little bit better. And then what I'm going to do is, you know, pack it down just a little bit, compress it. And I'm going to continue on until I have, oh, somewhere between, or somewhere around two-thirds of, of an inch. Done. Okay, I've got about a half an inch of the coil. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scoot it down towards the end that has the U. And I'm going to move it around the wire, or around the bend. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit and pull it until it's roughly centered. Now if you have to, you can pull your wires apart just a little bit to help you get it around that bend of the U. But you're just going to have to, to work it a little bit. Now, this is one of the reasons that I like to have a little bit of extra of this wire in case for some reason I'm having a problem getting it all the way around. And by the way, pushing it up with your nails can sometimes help, or pliers. <laughs> you shouldn't use it with your nails. I should know better to say that. But what you want to do is you want it to come around the bend. 
Now, if you like it about like this, if you like the um, the way that it's sitting, then that's great. We're going to move to the next part. If you think that this part is going to be a little too long, you can unwrap it a little bit. If it's a little too short, you can continue wrapping a little bit. I'm going to call this one good. I'm not going to cut off this tail yet, though. So let's go ahead and get prepared for the next Okay, step. what you're going to want to do is now is the time for a little 4 millimeter bead. What I like to do is put this 4 millimeter bead right at the very end. I'm going to make myself a loop. And it doesn't have to be a, a, a fantastic loop, just a small loop just to prevent the bead from falling off. So it's just a, a small loop. Doesn't even have to be closed. All I want to do is make sure my bead doesn't fall off. Now you may be wondering what the heck am I doing with the bead on this? Well one of the things on this pair of earrings that you really want to keep a consistent width across the entire set of earrings and it's really easy to you know tighten it too much or let it be too loose or whatever this little ball this little bead will help you keep a consistent width on your earring little trick that I learned some time back but um, this will help you from getting too tight in okay here we're gonna go with the first part of our um, weave I'm gonna take my tail out of the way I've got my wire coming up from underneath and I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it around three times. Now what you want to do possibly is to go ahead and separate these a bit at the ends. I'm going to turn one up and one down so you can easily get between these wires. So I'm going to take it and wrap it three times. So that's one two, three, and this bead is also useful for kind of compressing the wire. All right, so I've got it wrapped around three times. Now I'm going to take my wire back behind, through the two wires, and I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. And at this point, this is where the bead comes in, so I know that I can't tighten it more than this, or I shouldn't tighten it more than this. So again, wrap three times around the bottom. So one, two, three, you want three coils. Then you take your wire, you again go between the two wires from underneath and then you wrap around three times again. Now this is going to be, uh, before you do that though, before you wrap around, scoot your bead down to make sure that you're not bringing your two wires too close together. So it's one, two, three. Take the bead, scooch it in, and you've compressed some. Now you can see also for this little piece of wire, I've got a little piece of uh, metal showing between the two. I can use this to wrap uh, later on just to just to cover that little piece. All right, now it's time to end uh, your old wire and start up a new one. <clears throat> what I've done is I've come around and I've coiled once around the bottom wire. And you can see that my tail is coming to the back. I've got my new wire and my tail is going to come towards the front. Leave myself an inch or two tail and I'm going to coil around until I have three coils just like I'm supposed to. And don't worry right now about this one looking wonky. It's going to end up compressing into it. You'll, you'll never even notice it. But do try to keep it as neat as you can. So now hold on to the tail, whatever you do, hold on to the tail, <laughs> and then just con continue weaving. So I've got my three coils up on top, compress, do my three coils around the bottom, ok, 
compress. And before I cut these, and I actually don't even like cutting these until I get to the very end of my project. Um, you definitely don't want to cut them right away because the chances that they'll unravel while you're working are a lot greater. And that's part of the reason that I just wait till the very end to go ahead because then they're all compressed, they're all tied up against each other, and I don't have to worry about it. Now you can see I've moved back to my copper for this one. And you can see it's just a little bit kind of squunchy where I um, misshaped it a little bit. Um, it doesn't matter a whole lot if this happens as long as it's a, kind of like a gentle wave like this. But it comes from when you're trying to scoot your work down and you just bend it. <laughs> That's basically what happened. I bent it. So... As you work on it, of course, you're going to want to go ahead and compress your wires. And when you've gotten to the end, and you'll know you're at the end when you either run out of wire, when you've got just a little bit left, or this is the length that you want it, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the speed. So I am going to undo this a little bit and then take my wire cutter snip, take this off, and then cut the other wire to the same same length. So they're like that. Now I have to decide how big I want my loops at the end. And for this, I think my loops are just going to be a little too big, so I want to cut them down a tiny bit. So I'm going to Pick a distance. That looks about right. That's probably about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to make two loops. And I'm using the small part of my of my round nose pliers and just make a loop. So I've got a loop here and then I've got a loop on the other side. And I usually go ahead and turn them to the outside. You can turn them to the inside if you want to. But I usually turn them to the outside, and you can see that they're just a little different. But that's okay. I can just kind of reshape them so that they're pretty even. Now, with this last piece of wire down here, what I can do is I can just wrap it into this just a little bit more if I want to. I can probably, as long as I've got the three wires in here, uh, the three coils, I can probably just go ahead and cut it right now, which is what I'm going to do. But if you'd like, you can loop it, uh, coil it just a little bit more into this eye. So I'm going to take my cutters, snip off close. Then you can see where I had to go ahead and put in some wire. So I'm going to take it. And now I'm going to snip those wires. And be careful not to snip your base wires. <laughs> okay, coming up to here. I don't think I need any more loops around here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. And if you have any mistakes, like I do right here, um... I really suggest that you take a look at your project as you're doing it. What I did is I overlooped one. Ultimately, I'm probably not going to notice it in this particular project based on what I'm going to do next. However, I really do suggest that you take more time than I did with this one. Now, I see that I've got a little bit of a of a nubbin here because when I rub my fingers against it, this is one of the areas that I cut some wires. What I like to do is I'd like to take a pair of nylon jaw pliers, or you can even use your, your chain nose pliers, and I just like to flatten this all out. And that way, if there's any tiny little burrs, they just get uh, moved right on down in, and you're never going to notice Okay, them. I have come in with a dowel, and if you like to get a measurement of exactly how wide my dowel happens to be, it is just about five millimeters. <clears throat> so this is the dowel that I'm using. I mean, if you want to use one that's a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, you can. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take my top, I'm going to hold it with my thumb, and then I'm just going to wrap my wire weaving around the dowel. So I'm going, it's going to look something like this. And if you noticed, my two little ends kind of compress towards each other. So that's why I kind of like um, putting them to the outside, because when I do this, they both end up over the center. Go figure. So I've got it looking like this. I'm going to bring it up to the end. I'm going to press this in a little bit more. I'm going to take it off, and it looks like this. Well, that looks kind of strange for a pair of earrings, so I'm going to take my pliers and very gently rock it up. So I've rocked up this coil. Unfortunately, I can see this little uh, mistake that I made. Oh well. <clears throat> this is a demo. What can I say? Alrighty, we've got these um, done up like this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly pull them apart because I want them a little bit longer. So I've got it pulled apart. Now if I want to I can go ahead and wrap it around the dowel a little bit more. I could wrap it around a pair of very gently around a pair of round nose pliers and I can again gently form with my fingers the kind of um, spiral I want. I can tighten it up a little bit by just twisting it gently. And if I kind of have the end a little bit wonky, I just take my fingers and bend it up a little bit. So I go ahead and do this until it's just where I want it to be. And let me show you another one that I made. So here's another one, and I want this to look roughly similar. I don't ne necessarily need them to be the same. They should just be similar. So I can see that if I wanted to, I could coil up this part just a little bit more, just to be a little bit closer to this one, but I, w I didn't really have to. I can just leave it the way it is. And you can see that I did a much better job on this one than I did on this one. Oh well. So next step is we're going to go ahead and get our ear wires. Now I'm using sterling silver ear, wire, ear wires because I just don't like copper in my ears. And I think you can actually go ahead and, you know, blend the silver and the copper. I think they look fine together. So I'm just going to, again, take this end. Stick it on the ear wire, close the ear wire. Same thing for the other one. Open your ear wire to the side, just like you would a jump ring. Pop it on, close your ear wire. And you have a pair of spiral earrings. For my surgery, I'm going to use a dressmaker's pin. Now, if you have an, a sharp awl, that probably works just as well. A dressmaker's pin seems to work fine for this. Um, I would just suggest that you be very careful. You do not want to poke your fingers with this while you're doing this. Now, if you can see, and I'll point to it, I've got a piece of bare wire right here, and this wire is on top of the other one. What I want to do is I want to scooch this wire down to its proper place. So I'm going to take the pin and just gently try to move it down. I don't know if you, how well you saw that, but I moved it down over the bare space. Then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm gently going to bend it in. So I'm kind of rounding it in, and uh, I'll need to go ahead and, and work on it just a little bit more, but taking the pin and rounding it in, that will help you go ahead and 
um, get that so it's not quite as okay visible. I have done a little bit more surgery and I think that they came out pretty well now the one that had the problem is this one and you really can't tell anymore I just went ahead and finagled it a little bit and like I said it may happen to you I, I really do suggest that you take your time with it <laughs> But I was rushing for the demo, so what can I say? But anyway, this is a set of spiral earrings. Now, what you can do to make this even a little bit more different would be to go ahead and instead of doing three coils, do five coils, and it'll make it a, a much more lighter and airy earring. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a little something else. You can see at the top, right now I have five coils. So instead of doing the three coils like I did in the demo, I'm using five coils. Now I moved it down to seven coils. So you can see what it looks like if you have more coils. Then I moved it down to nine co coils. So you can see it's even more light and airy with nine. And then I decided to uh, add some beads and I'll show you how to do this. But with this I used 11 coils. So what I did is I basically coiled around 11 times and for this you're going to need to make sure that neither one of your ends are um, looped or yeah looped. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the bead on. I've got my 11 coils and I'm just going to go about my business as normal. You know I'm just going to wrap it around and then do another 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Nine, ten, and eleven. Compress. Add on the bead to the bottom. And uh, go again. So when you're ready to stop, I like to pretty much stop with an even number on each side. And what I'm going to do at this point is I think I'm going to coil it around like three times, three or four times before I end it. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like to go ahead and spiral this one. So I'm going to cut it just like I normally would. And I'm going to loop in so I've got them looped in time to cut this so this is standard weaving now I'm going to go ahead and take my dowel and do what I normally do, just wrap it around. Now you'll notice that when it comes to the beads, you have to be very, very careful because they will not wrap the same way. So they're going to, especially at the end, they may curve in some and you may get lumps, so to speak. I don't um, do the rest of this on the dowel because I, I may break the wires. So when I want to finish the curving, I'm going to do it off the dowel. And I'm just going to use my fingers. So see how I'm using my fingers to gently bend things around? So again, I pretty much do the same thing that I did before. Just play with it some until I get it to where I want it. So there's what it looks like if you have more of the coils between each one of them and if you decide to go ahead and use beads. Now in reality if I was making this for myself I would probably use three millimeter beads instead of four millimeter beads but you can use whatever size you like. So that's just another idea for what you can do with these coiled earrings.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you don't already do so. And meanwhile, you know, all I can say is practice, 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 um, make your earrings. But the most important thing to do is have fun while you're, while you're making them because this shouldn't be something that you have to sweat over and, and worry and everything like that. You just want to have fun. So this is Gail saying have a great day and keep on weaving. Bye.